If you're a true crime fan, you've probably watched detectives solve cases using CCTV footage. Bring his face up, full screen. His glasses. There's a reflection. You may have a witness. But in the real world, surveillance footage often looks more like this. So why on earth does this footage look stuck in the 1970s when technology has evolved to super res 4K? Especially when the cost of bad CCTV footage could be the difference between a solved case and a fugitive on the run. In New York City alone, there are over 15,000 surveillance cameras used by the NYPD. Since 2007, the NYPD has spent over 159 million on surveillance systems and maintenance without public oversight. But in criminal investigations, quality supersedes quantity. That could make all the difference in the world. This is Nick Barrero. FBI trained detective and chief forensic analyst of Principal Forensics. He knows all about CCTV, the good, the bad, and the blurry. Most people don't even think about their system until they need it, and that's usually too late. A gas station owner might be using 15-year-old cameras, but it's never an issue until the place gets robbed at gunpoint. And all of a sudden, the best they have is, you know, 640 by 480, really tiny, low-quality video. Plus, if people don't regularly use their systems, chances are they forgot their passwords or even just how their systems work. But even if that footage is technically accessible, sometimes it's retrieved incorrectly. Like using a cell phone to record the screen of the security system as it's playing the video back. Most law enforcement officers in this country have zero training on how to actually get the most original, best quality video. And oftentimes, by the time the case gets assigned to a detective and somebody goes back to follow up and tries to get the better, higher quality version of that video, it's already been overwritten. But the real problem? Even modern surveillance cameras shoot footage like this. Why? Well, for one, many cameras sacrifice footage quality for storage. See, when you're at Costco browsing for a system, you'll probably see advertised HD quality video that can be stored for 30 days. That doesn't tell you all that much because you can set a surveillance system to record for five frames a second, which is very low, very choppy, and not good, smooth motion video. But it'll still be HD, it'll still be high definition, but that's very different from a system that will record 60 frames a second in HD quality. Frames per second, like its name implies, is the number of individual images or frames the system captures every second. The average industry frame rate of most CCTV cameras is around 15 frames per second, while traditional film camera video is around 24 frames per second. But low frames per seconds could result in choppy footage that could miss key moments. The next thing to consider is resolution, or the number of pixels in every frame. Our camera's resolution in this parking lot scene is 1250 by 834 pixels. Zoomed out, the image is clean. But let's say we have a homicide suspect sitting in that white BMW SUV on the right. I have no idea what that license plate is. Um, we can try and enhance it a little bit. No, we, we maybe can make some really wild guesses at what a couple of those might be, but you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get the, an accurate license plate out of that. Now let's say the camera is at the same scene with a higher resolution of 2500 by 1667 pixels. At this zoom level, you can actually start to see a little bit of a difference. So if it's set on the higher quality, we do a little bit of enhancement. It looks pretty good, but I'm pretty sure that's JTF916. But of course, the higher the resolution and the more FPS equals the bigger the video file overall. So if you want to store this footage for playback, you'll need tons of storage, which also means more money spent. A camera shooting 15 frames per second at 1080p resolution can fill an average of 35 gigabytes per day. And when that frames per second goes up to 30, the footage takes up around 40 gigabytes per day. But if that resolution is higher, like 4MP or million pixels, which is close to two times 1080p, then that takes up almost double the storage. Security systems typically store footage on an external recorder. An IP system uses what's called NVRs, or network video recorders, while an analog system stores it on what's called a DVR, or digital video recorders. Systems can also be cloud-based, and in some cases, even just stored on an SD card. But these external recorders can be pricey. 
a quick Amazon search shows us that an external four terabyte hard drive can come in around $80, whereas six terabytes retails higher, and it only goes up from there. If we have one camera set to 25 frames per second, recording 24 hours a day, storing footage for 60 days, with a resolution of 1080p, that's roughly 33 terabytes of required storage space. But if you had a bigger business with 10 cameras, all with those same settings, you're looking at 334 terabytes. That's around 18, 18 terabyte hard drives, which is around $8,600. The cost of the cameras is nothing compared to the cost of storing video 24 hours a day from every officer on the force from multiple camera angles, their body camera, their dash camera, their backseat camera. Recently, some local law enforcement agencies announced they're dropping body cam programs altogether, citing costs and storage requirements. Back in 2019, the Spokane Police Department said they spend around $321,000 on body camera storage per year, part of a five-year deal. In 2016, Wichita, Kansas Police Department gave up their air division to fund body camera programs. So if the government is struggling to pay for footage storage costs, imagine the toll it takes on small businesses. It's no wonder many owners choose to record in a lower quality. But things could be changing. At least residential surveillance is becoming more affordable. Take the popular home surveillance system, Ring. These systems are cloud-based, so you have to pay for that cloud-based storage. The most basic plan begins at $3 per month, giving you video recording for a camera or doorbell. If you have a Ring camera and you don't pay anything, they don't store anything. You can get on there and see a live view of what your Ring camera is seeing, but you can never go back and see anything that happened in the past because if you don't pay them anything, they won't store anything. If you have a camera from the last decade, chances are the quality will be fine. Just make sure you have a big enough hard drive, and if you don't, invest in one. Luckily, though still pricey, storage has become more cost-effective over the years and configure those settings, whether you're purchasing a new system or already have one. I would maximize every setting you can. The frame rate, the resolution, um, the sensitivity to motion. Now let's say you didn't do any of this, but get into a not so great situation and have some video to use, but it's not the best quality. While you may not be able to enhance it yourself, there are some expert centers that could do it for you through some tech voodoo. But for the near future, make sure you're stocking up on that storage and remembering those passwords.